Leading Light, presented by Does, the soap that does everything in your washing machine, and Ivory Soap, the most famous soap in the world. Soap operas, the inspiration for many genres of television, radio broadcasts, and even novels, not only nationally but worldwide, found its first strides towards success by inspiring the struggling people of the Great Depression. The daytime drama Pan Dreams was first aired on October 20th, 1930, by WGN, the broadcast company for the Chicago Tribune. This was the first soap opera of May to come. What made soap operas different from most other radio broadcasts was that soap operas were of the first to use relatable characters to portray an exciting plot. Another thing that made them unique was how the characters' dilemmas seemed to stretch on without solution, leaving the writers to allow the plot to span for many episodes while still keeping fans intrigued with the ever-expanding plots. This concept would shape most modern entertainment, but it wasn't an easy path to success. It took tragedy to bring soap operas to success. The creator of the first soap opera, Erna Phillips, did not become a success overnight. Before she revolutionized radio and television around the world, her father died when she was eight years old, leaving her mother to raise the children alone. Then when she was only 19, Erna was pregnant and abandoned by her boyfriend. To provide for her newborn child, Phillips worked as a school teacher in Dayton, Ohio, even though she had aspirations to become an actress. Later, when the baby grew older, Erna Phillips started trying out for roles in plays in an effort to start a career as an actress, but she was told that she looked too plain to have any real success, and for that reason she began playing roles as a voice actress on WGN. Although being a voice actress wasn't exactly her first choice, Erna soon learned through her experiences at WGN that she had a knack for writing radio shows, and she struck gold when she wrote and aired the first daytime drama serial, Painted Dreams. Getting a soap opera on the air was no easy task. They were major financial gambles for two reasons. The first being, soap operas to begin with were an experimental format, a test to see if radio shows could get sponsors during the day. This prospect at the time was almost unheard of, as in the late 1920s, prospective radio listeners were Americans who worked during the day, and for that reason, investors believed radio was only listened to in the afternoon. So it was extremely difficult for radio companies to get daytime sponsors so it was extremely rare for radio companies to have daytime ad slots. But the genius of soap operas was to target not the working Americans at the time, but instead the many stay-at-home wives of the time. The next big risk was the originality of soap operas. Soap operas were an almost entirely original concept, and the closest thing to a predecessor it had was dramatic comedy, a genre that was in basic summary, a late-night radio series in which humor is used to tell the story of a character undertaking a change for the better, which overall is really only a faint relationship to soap operas. The problem with this is when a new genre arises, there are no pre-existing fans to work off of, making it a risky investment. For this reason, Chicago was very important for the success of soaps, because places like New York that were radio giants at the time and still are today could not afford to gamble on soap operas as their economy was highly dependent on their radio broadcasts. But the other broadcasting cities that were able to afford a risk like soap operas often were half-rate. For example, Hollywood, which was a city that did not rely on radio broadcast, but for that reason had far inferior broadcasting technology. However, Chicago was right in the sweet spot of not too dependent on the radio to not allow risks, but nonetheless a radio-heavy city as news companies like the Chicago Tribune used radio locally. This is why Chicago played a crucial part in the success of soap operas, but their sponsors played an equally important role in their success. Without sponsors, soap operas would not have enough funding to remain on air, but it was a struggle to get advertisers to sponsor soap operas to begin with. As we've said, this was due to soap operas being a new format that wasn't a proven moneymaker yet. 
Most advertisements were targeted towards women, and more specifically stay-at-home wives, that were more likely to be listening to a daytime drama program. Soap operas were a success from the very beginning, but they were never more prosperous than in the years that followed soon after their first airing. In a post-depression America with bleak economic downturns and not much hope for American businesses. This looming depression of the time was actually what gave soap operas the opportunity they needed to thrive. The initial principles that made soap operas soap operas were their relatable qualities, which originally was produced, and still typically is produced, to relate to women in order to play towards his audience, which was mostly made up of stay-at-home wives. But it was soon discovered that this quality was not only useful to relate to stay-at-home wives, but also to reflect the ideas and thoughts of people of the Depression. The characters of soap operas lived through the same troubles that Americans did at that time, living unextravagant lives and experiencing the same hardships that Americans of the time were experiencing. At the same time, the characters would fall in love and be happy and satisfied with their lives. This gave the listeners of the era a feeling of hope that they too could have lives full of love and happiness and satisfaction while still living in the absence of luxury. This hope that soap operas shined onto its listeners made them exceptionally attractive to their viewers. And having been aired almost immediately after the Roaring Twenties, an era which put a radio in every American household, and at the same time being aired during the Depression, which was a time which had fireside chats drawing American listeners to the radio, gave soap operas the edge they needed to grow. But soap operas would not have the impact that they did today without the tragedy of the Great Depression. By 1945, 15 years after the original soap opera, Pain and Dreams, 64 serials were on the air from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. on NBC. Historian Robert LaGuardia said that, by the late 1930s, soap operas were radio's most economically powerful product. With viewership on the rise during that time, and much critical acclaim coming from critics in the U.S., the soap opera format had proven itself to be a great success. Soap operas greatly influence much of our modern entertainment today. They revolutionized radio broadcast and television by introducing serial plots and stories to them. Many radio broadcasts and TV shows today follow the serial drama format and it's grown to be a standard on some networks. Soaps also proved that women, or more specifically stay-at-home wives, were a large market for advertising and that daytime ad slots were not entirely fruitless ventures. Soap operas had relatable characters that gave listeners hope in a post-depression environment. These relatable character archetypes still pop up in our modern media today, and in part we have to thank soap operas. While soap opera viewership has dwindled in the US, some US serials still garner many viewers in other countries. According to CNN in reference to the NBC serial The Bold and the Beautiful, the show can be seen in more than 110 countries, and it garners 24.5 million viewers across the globe in 2008. While the format may be considered dead by some, its relatable plot lines helped Americans through the Great Depression, and the influence of soap operas can be felt in much more modern entertainment today. And frankly, I'm happy Chicago had something to do with it. Brought to you today by Jell-O. America's favorite gelatin dessert, and Baker's Chocolate, the favorite of the finest cooks for nearly 200 years.